Thank you for having me. My name is Moore Harkel Balter. I'm in the computer science department at CMU, and I'm going to be talking about optimal scheduling for multi server systems. This is all joint work with my um, two terrific PhD students, Isaac Grossoff and Zeev Scully, who are a picture here. So, the topic of optimal scheduling for multi server systems is very popular in the theoretical computer science community. But it is also a very popular topic in my community, which is the symmetric stochastic queuing community. And I'm going to actually be talking about two papers that come from that community, both of which won awards and are on the topic of optimal scheduling. So when we talk about optimal scheduling, it comes in two different settings. The first setting, which you're probably most familiar with, is the adversarial setting. There's this big bad adversary, and the adversary is trying to trick us by picking these job sizes that are really bad and these arrival times that are really bad. And we have to schedule in some way that works against this worst case adversary, okay? The other setting is the stochastic setting. So in the stochastic setting, the job sizes and the inter-arrival times of jobs are all chosen from distributions. So in particular, if I'm looking at job sizes, they might be chosen IID, from some particular distribution. And the distribution can be any general distribution. So it's very different than the adversary. And in this talk, I'm gonna be concentrating on the stochastic setting, but I'm always gonna be going back and forth and talking about comparing with the worst case setting. So the outline of this talk, I'm gonna start with a warm up, which is just how do you do optimal scheduling for a single server queue? And then we're gonna move on to a multi-server queue but where there's a shared queuing part over here, and then we have the servers, okay? So the servers share a queue. And that's gonna be the topic of one of the papers. And finally, we're gonna to move to a dispatching model where the jobs come in and they immediately have to be dispatched to one of the queues, okay? So they immediately re-release them. And that's gonna be the topic of the other paper. All right, so let's start with a single server queue. So single server queue. So here's a queue. Okay, a server and a queue. And these jobs arrive over time. And you can see that when a job arrives, it starts getting worked on, that's the orange part. And then another job arrives and the job and service continues to get worked on and various other jobs arrive and the job and service continues to get worked on. And you can see that the jobs have different sizes, some are big and some are small. And this orange part is what we call the attained service. It's how much work has been done so far. And the green part is the remaining size. That's what's left to do on the job. And at any point in time, there could be a scheduling policy that is deciding which job to run. So they don't have to happen at first come first serve order. So the scheduling policy might swap and say, okay, now we're gonna work on this job, this other job. And the scheduling policies preempt to resume. You don't lose anything by switching. Okay. so. In this setting, we'll be interested in the response time. Response time is the time from when the job arrives until it's finally finished. And we'll be interested in the average response time, the average over all the jobs. So the simplest stochastic model is something called an MG1. Nothing scary about this. All it means is there's a single server, that's the one, the M stands for Markovian, which says the arrival process is a Poisson process. So jobs are coming in at some steady rate of lambda jobs per second. And the G says that the job sizes come from some general distribution. And X here is the random variable for job size. And you can see that there's all different job sizes, big and small coming from this distribution. And at any moment in time, the jobs have some attained service and some remaining size. Okay, so at any moment in time, they look like this. Now, the only term you really need to remember for this talk besides response time T is something called load. And load is very important in stochastic systems. Load is the fraction of time the server is busy. Think of it as like a traffic intensity, okay? So load is, is utilization and it's denoted by something called rho, okay? And so rho is the product of how many jobs are coming in per second multiplied by how many seconds of work on average each job brings in. So three jobs per second, each bringing in a quarter of a second of work, for instance, says the load is three quarters. And this load has to be less than one. That's what's going on. 
All right. So within this setting, imagine you have a queue. You've been, you know, you're running some kind of scheduling policy. I'm going to ask you what scheduling policy will minimize the mean response time, the average of the response time of all the jobs. What should we do? So many of you have thought about this already, okay, how you want to order the jobs. And you know from your own life that you want to order the jobs with the smallest green parts first. In particular, you want to favor the jobs that are going to finish quickly, the jobs with the shorter remaining processing time. So you want to always do that. We do that on our desk, okay? Like when you have some job and you can finish it really quickly and get it over with, you try to get it over with, okay? And this policy, SRPT, is actually optimal in the worst case. So it's also optimal stochastically. It's just the optimal thing to do. And it was first analyzed for an MG1 in 66, but it's the optimal thing to do. So that's our warm up. Our warm up was a single server queue, and we should run shortest remaining processing time. But now we come to the interesting parts of the talk, which is what happens when you have a multi server queue. What do you do there? So this here is a picture of what I call an MGK. It's the same thing as an MG1, it's just that they're K servers. And what I'm trying to figure out is at all moments in time, how should I schedule? Which K jobs should I run preemptively at every moment in time so as to minimize the mean response time? Now, the key idea here is that we ideally would somehow like to match a single powerful optimal server in terms of our performance. So you can imagine having this one single server that is like very big, okay, K times as, as big as the individual servers. And this would serve as a lower bound, okay, because in the single server, we can mimic anything we're doing in the multi-server system. So this would serve as a lower bound for how well we could do. And we ideally would like to be here. We would like to meet, you know, match this kind of like lower bound. But we actually know what the optimal scheduling policy is for a single server. In fact, I just went over it. The optimal scheduling policy for the single server, the powerful single server is SRPT. So somehow in our multi-server system over here, we would like to somehow match a single powerful SRPT server. But that tells us that we really somehow want to be working on the shortest jobs, the, the jobs with the shortest remaining processing time at all times. So we'd really like to take our multi-server system and be working on like the K jobs that have the shortest remaining processing time at all moments of time. So what is that? So I'm gonna call that policy SRPTK, okay? So at every moment in time, the K servers at all times are running the K jobs with the shortest remaining processing time. This would be lovely, okay, if we can do this. And this certainly sounds like the right thing to do at all moments. You should be working on the jobs that are gonna finish quickly, right? Well, when we look at the worst case community and we look at this policy SRPTK, you might start to think that SRPTK is actually very far away from optimal in the worst case. So there was a result back from 1997, okay, by Leonardi and Ross, and it basically looks at the competitive ratio compared to OPT of SRPTK. And what it finds is it's the minimum of these two quantities, both of which can be very high. The first quantity is related to the number of arrivals, so that could be infinity, okay? And the second quantity is the ratio between the maximum job size and the minimum job size, which also can be very high. And so you get this impression that SRPTK is not near optimal. And in fact, what they prove is that no other policy actually does better than SRPTK, okay? So none of the policies are near optimal. But this makes one kind of troubled, okay? Because I just finished convincing you that we really should be working on the K jobs of the shortest remaining processing time. That really feels like the right thing to do shouldn't we be able to prove that it is like almost always optimal or something, even if it's not always optimal, exactly optimal? So that is what we do. What we do, okay, so this problem is considered closed by the worst case community. What we do is we look at SRPT in a stochastic setting and we prove that it is heavy traffic optimal. So what I mean by that is here's our MGK, 
that is doing SRPTK, always running the K jobs for the shortest remaining time. And then on the other side, I have this lower bound, which is this K times faster single server. And what we prove is the stuff on the left converges to the stuff on the right when traffic gets high, when load goes to one, okay? So our theorem says, if you look at the mean response time of SRPTK and the ratio of that to the mean response time of SRPT1, the left to the right, that goes to one. And what that says is SRPTK is in fact optimal as we believed, okay, when load is high. Okay, so this is the first result of its kind to prove some kind of optimality in multi-server systems like this. Um, but what's interesting about it is that even though we say this is true when load is high, looking at high load is something that is well understood in the stochastic community to give us an indicator of how things work under lower load too. And this tells us that SRPTK is probably near optimal for all loads. So that's the importance of that result. All right, so we saw SRPT was the thing to do for the single server. Then we looked at the multi-server and we saw we should do SRPTK, okay? So SRPT is like the thing, okay? But now let's look at a more complicated model. So this dispatching model, what are we going to do there? So the dispatching model is, is quite different because you need to make a decision right away. So a job comes in and you're like, have to send it somewhere. And companies like this dispatching model because they don't want to hold on to all the jobs. They want to send the jobs off, okay? So in this dispatching model, we again are going to look at response time, the time from when a job arrives until it leaves. And we're going to ask, how are we going to minimize this mean response time? But now we have two questions, two decision points. The first question is, how should we dispatch? What policy should we use? And the second question is once the jobs are at a server, how should we schedule in that server? What scheduling policy should we use? So two decision points. And we wanna answer these again with the goal of minimizing response time, okay? So the second question ends up being very easy to understand. The second question is, okay, once you've got all the jobs here, how should you schedule them? Well, I already told you you should do SRPT, okay? So the second question is very simple. We have SRPT, but we still are left with this question of how do we do dispatching and can we do dispatching optimally? And I say the words can, can we do it optimally? Because the dispatching setting is way more restrictive than having a central queue because you have to make your decision right away. So it's not obvious that you can get anywhere near optimal. So to get some intuition as to like how to think about dispatching, I'm going to look at some very simple common dispatching policies just to give us some intuition. So the most common dispatching policy, if I asked you, you know, what's the simplest thing you can think of, you would say random, okay? Every job just goes to a random queue. That sounds good, right? We call that rand, all right? But then you might think, well, maybe a more sophisticated dispatching policy would be that every job when it comes in looks at the total work in each of the queues and goes to the queue with the least work left. That sounds smarter, more, more sophisticated, okay? So let's look at how they do when we look at mean response time as a function of load. So here we see mean response time as a function of load and you want lower mean response time. And what you see is the least work left actually has significantly higher mean response time than RAND. And you might be wondering, why is least work left so much worse, okay? And, and are any of these optimal? Like, how do we achieve optimality? So to understand what is going on, you need to realize, remember, that we, what we ideally want to do is make our dispatching system look like a single powerful server. We ideally would like to take our dispatching system and somehow make it as good as that one single server of K times the speed. So, but that single server of K times the speed would be doing SRPT. So what we really need to do is somehow take our dispatching system and make it feel like it's doing just SRPT, always running the K shortest jobs, okay? But in order to do that, we need to 
spread out the small jobs. So we need to give every server some small jobs to work on because that feels like that would be working towards optimality. So how are we gonna give every server some small jobs to work on? So our solution is called guardrails and it's gonna take me a little while to explain it, okay? So imagine you have all these job sizes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide them into groups, size rank one, size rank two, size rank three, just buckets. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start with any dispatching policy. You give me the dispatching policy, anything you want, like say RAND, and I'm gonna convert it into a new dispatching policy, which I'm gonna call GP or GRAND, okay? Which is RAND, but with guardrails, okay? This policy P, but with guardrails. Guardrails are like the guardrails on the road, okay? And what's gonna happen here is GP is gonna do the same exact thing as P, but while it's doing it, it's always gonna ensure that each size rank, rank one, rank two, rank three, stays equally balanced, nearly equally balanced among the servers so that they all have the same amount of rank one, they all have the same amount of rank two, they all have the same amount of rank three, okay? This is to make the individual servers feel like one big SRPTQ. So as an example, okay, GRAND would take a job of rank R, okay, and would dispatch it to a random server. But a random server among the set of servers that are capable of receiving rank R jobs without violating the guardrails, okay, while keeping that workload equal, okay? GLWL, least work left, would dispatch the job to the server with the least total work among the set S of servers that won't violate the guardrails, okay? And that set changes over time. Okay, so a little bit more details, okay? Again, the jobs are broken up by ranks and we should think about the rank as if you start with job size X, your rank is log base C of X, okay? So that's, think about these ranks that way. And we somehow are gonna try to maintain a balance of each rank across the queues. So there are a lot of little details, like when we're balancing, do we balance the remaining work of rank R, the dispatched work of rank R, the number of jobs of rank R, you know, a lot of possibilities. It turns out what we wanna do is we wanna do B. We wanna actually balance the dispatched work of, um, sorry, we wanna, we wanna balance the dispatched work of rank R. And we do this to limit the effect of fresh arrivals. It also turns out that when we're dealing with idle servers, we wanna do something like prioritize idle servers to be the first to get work. So there's a lot of these interesting kinds of things. But what's most interesting is this thing C, okay? You would think this C doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we use for C, but it turns out that this base C in this formula and this log base C of X, this base C is critically important in a stochastic setting. So why does C matter so much? So how to set C? Okay, if you set C too large, then you don't have a differentiation between small jobs and large jobs. There's just no differentiation, okay, if C is too big. And then you're not really giving priority to small jobs, which would be bad. But if you set C too small, then there are too few jobs in each rank bucket. And then it's hard to do load balancing among them because there are just too few of them. So you've got to get C just right. And it turns out that the key insight is that C depends on load. Remember load, like how much load is coming into the system? So, and you have to use this formula. This is the formula to be able to prove optimality. In particular, as the load gets higher and higher, C should get smaller and smaller. So as rho goes to one, C should converge to one, okay? Now, assuming you do all of this and you define guardrails in this way, so you've defined guardrails with this correct C, you can prove the theorem that we wanna prove. So we can prove that any guarded policy is heavy traffic optimal. So if you start with some policy P and you create GP, 
and you want to compare it with the, the ultimate lower bound, a single server, k times as fast, doing SRPT, you will find that the system on the left and on the right for any dispatching policy P, the stuff on the left and the stuff on the right become the same as load goes to one. So what this says is that GP is optimal when load is high. We're hitting optimality. Now, again, this is a good indicator that GP is near optimal for all loads because lower loads are easier to understand than higher loads. Higher loads kind of dominate what's going on. But what's really interesting, I think, here is that the dispatching policy P doesn't matter. So if you're somebody like me, you've spent half your life thinking about how should I do dispatching, okay? I'm always thinking about a better dispatching policy. And what this theorem says is we don't care what your dispatching policy is. You can use RAND, you can use least work left, you can use CIDA, you can use any kind of crazy dispatching policy. Who cares? Once you add guardrails to it, it's heavy traffic optimal, okay? So just an illustration of this. Here was least work left in RAND. We showed mean response time as a function of load. Down here is GRAND and GLWL, G, G least work left. And what you see is that these policies are so much better than the original policies. And what the theorem says is that all G policies are heavy traffic optimal. It doesn't matter which policy you use. They all sit here, down here, in this heavy traffic optimal. OK, so I promised that I would relate this back to the adversarial setting, OK? So it turns out that this problem was also considered in the adversarial setting, okay? This problem of optimal dispatching was considered by Avrahami and Azar in 2003. And they too looked at a system like this and they came, with a, they came to the conclusion that you should use this particular scheduling policy, dispatching policy rather, IMD. And this IMD is not that different from guardrails but it has a few big differences. Like it's a single policy that dispatches to the server with the least R work so far. There's no priority for idle servers. But one of the biggest differences is they use this fixed base C in the logarithm. When they think about the rank, they use C as two, okay? And they prove that IMD has this competitive ratio, which is similar to what you saw before, you know, this, this high competitive ratio and nothing better can be done. And so you basically are not gonna get close to optimality, okay? We went ahead and actually analyzed IMD in the stochastic setting, but unfortunately IMD doesn't translate to the stochastic setting well, so it performs badly in the stochastic setting, but it's, beca it's really because IMD wasn't created for a stochastic setting. So in particular, like the C here doesn't incorporate the load, okay? And it doesn't change with the load. So there's nothing to be done, okay? All right, I wanna conclude. So the conclusion for this talk, this talk can be viewed as basically going beyond the adversarial setting, beyond the worst case setting. And I know this is a common theme nowadays that people talk about going beyond the worst case setting. I was interested in this since graduate school, this idea of going beyond worst case. Our goal in this talk is to look at optimal scheduling and multi-server systems. That's what we set out to do. And we set out to do it in a few different multi-server systems, one with a central queue, and one with separate queues in dispatching. And what we showed in this talk over and over again is that if you look at the adversarial setting, you get this feeling that you just can't get near optimal. There's nothing to be done because of this worst case adversary. But if you look in the stochastic setting, you can prove that you actually can get near optimal. So in particular, this SRPTK on the left is heavy traffic optimal. And on the right, you can take any dispatching policy P at all and convert it into this guarded P policy with guardrails, and that will be heavy traffic optimal. I realize I've gone fast. Um, if you have questions, please send me email. I'm happy to schedule time to talk to you. Thank you.